Hey, what's up? This is going to be the first version of Productivity Shop Slow Jams. I'm going to redo the video how I use Alfred because I got a new computer and a new microphone and that way I can zoom in and it'll be a better quality video. So let's celebrate. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> I'll finish the rest later. Okay. So, woo! Alfred video, yay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all the sections that I did last time. I'm gonna explain a little more theory. My mom usually says that I go too fast, but that's the point of productivity shop, but productivity shop, slow jams. Here we go. So what is Alfred? Alfred is an application launcher that is basically Spotlight, but much more powerful. There is the free version, which has lots of cool features, and then also the Power Pack version, which has some extended functionality. I'm gonna go ahead and show you all of the features in the free version first, then I'll show you the Power Pack features, then I'm gonna go through every single thing in the settings and explain what it is. Some of them I might not know, but I'm gonna do my best, so here we go. So I'm gonna go to alfredapp.com and download Alfred 4. I'll navigate to my downloads folder, open up the DMG that was downloaded, and then I'll drag the Alfred 4 icon into the applications folder. Next, I'll do shift command A to open up the applications folder, type in Alfred, and go ahead and do command O and open Alfred. I'm gonna go ahead and do begin setup. I'll install the power pack later. So I'll do continue without power pack. And then for preferences migration, I'm gonna do no migration. That way we can do it together. Next, I'm going to click on the Mac OS permissions button and we're going to allow Alfred some permissions. That way it can do its thing. I'll click on accessibility access. I'll go ahead and click the lock and enter my password. And then once you've entered your password, go ahead and make sure that the checkbox next to Alfred 4 is selected. While I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to full disk access. This will allow Alfred to search your entire hard drive whenever you're looking for something. Make sure that Alfred 4 is selected. And then if you want Alfred to be able to search your contacts, which I recommend, you can go ahead and go to contacts access and then make sure that Alfred 4 is also checked off there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close out the security preferences and then close any other windows that are open. Once you provided all of the security permissions for Alfred, you can go ahead and restart Alfred. And then you can see at the top right, a little, little Alfred hat icon should appear. If the preferences haven't already opened, go ahead and click on the hat icon and do preferences. For notifications here, I'm gonna go ahead and do don't allow because I don't really like notifications whatsoever. So you can go ahead and enable or disable that at your leisure and change it later. So with the preferences window open, I'm gonna go ahead and change the default keyboard shortcut for Alfred to be command space. That's the default keyboard shortcut for Spotlight by default. I don't really use Spotlight. So if you don't wanna do this, skip over this step, but I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. Before changing it here, go ahead and go to System Preferences by clicking on the little Apple icon at the top left and clicking System Preferences. Then go to Keyboard, Shortcuts, Spotlight, and you'll want to make sure that these two items are deselected because these are what assign the Command Space Keyboard Shortcut to the Spotlight functionality. And so I'm going to deselect these. And then once those are deselected, I can click inside of the Alfred hotkey field and do command space and it'll allow me to change my default keyboard shortcut to command space. Cool. Now, whenever I do command space, just to confirm, Alfred should show up here. And then if you want to manually toggle Alfred or if it's kind of being weird, you can always click on the hat icon at the top in the menu bar and click on toggle Alfred. Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up an application with Alfred. So what I'm gonna do is do command space and then I'll type the application that I want to open. So I'm gonna go ahead and start typing Photoshop, so PH, and then you can see that there's a list. Now if I push enter, Alfred is going to assume that I want to select the first result. If I do command two, it'll select the second item and so on and so on. I'm gonna go ahead and push the down key and push enter and Photoshop will open. So whenever I opened Photoshop, I just type the letters PH. Now Alfred is a program that will learn which programs you select whenever you type the first couple letters of an application. And it'll move it to the top the more you select a particular program. So, so when I go ahead and open up Alfred, now instead of take photo, Photoshop is gonna be at the top. Now if I wanted photo both to be at the top, 
what I would do is just type PH and then go down to photo booth and then open photo booth. And then now when I type PH again, I'm gonna go ahead and do it again. And now a third time when I type PH, photo booth will be at the top. So if you want a particular code of letters to be associated with a particular result, just do it a couple times and then Alfred will learn which result you're trying to get with those particular letters. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back to Photoshop because I use Photoshop more than photo booth. Awesome. Now I'm a person who uses a Wacom tablet and so constantly going to the dock or going to the applications folder for me is a little bit slower. So that's why I like to open up applications using Alfred with just two little letters and your muscle memory will kind of kick in after a while. So I can type CH for Google Chrome, which I usually use or MA for mail. And then Alfred will always learn those key combinations as I just mentioned for all of the programs. So next I'm gonna go to the feature section in Alfred Preferences. And in order to access the preferences, go ahead and do Command Space or open up Alfred. And then from here, I'm gonna do Command Comma with the Alfred window open, and it should jump to the preferences. Now, if you forget that shortcut, you can always go to the Alfred icon in the menu bar and then click on the preferences here. And then here you can see default results. Now, usually searching your entire hard drive every time you want to open up an application or search for a contact is a bad idea because it'll make each search slower. So Alfred limits your default search scope to your most common items. So let's see what they have here. Preferences, so if I do, let's say I wanna change the screensaver, I can search for a screensaver and then it'll show up. If I search for contacts, I can search for Luke and then open up my Luke Carter contact and then applications are by default included in the default search scope. So if I wanna search for a preference like screensaver, I can do screensaver and then it'll show up. If I'm gonna search through my contacts, I can make sure to have that. I always include folders because of the way that I organize my files, check out this video. And then I always include Apple scripts as well. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to search your entire hard drive and not just your default search scope. So I'm gonna do command space as if I was going to search for an application and then I'm gonna hit space one more time. This will open up the entirety of my hard drive to be searchable. I'm gonna search for test document and the test document that I left on my desktop is the first result. So I'm gonna do command enter and it'll reveal the file for me. Now, if you search for a particular type of file and you don't wanna do the command space space every time, you can add certain extensions to be included in the default search scope. For example, I'll do command space, space, and do duplicate to all to find a Photoshop script that I use a lot. I use Photoshop scripts a lot, so I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the default search scope. So I'm gonna do command space, command comma to open up Alfred preferences, and I'm gonna click on advanced. Then I'll go ahead and search for the type of file that I want to add to my default search scope. And since I just searched for it, I'll push up and it'll go to the last thing that I searched for. And then I can drag this file, and it could be any of the files that you want with the proper extension into this little dialog box. Then I'll do close, and then now when I do command space, I can type duplicate to all, and then the JavaScript Photoshop script file will show up without having to do command space, space. Pretty cool. Now, whenever you search within your default search scope, and there's no results, Alfred is gonna assume that you want to search the internet. So if I search for where is Ikea, it's not within my default search scope and I'm gonna push enter and my default browser will go ahead and open up and use the default search engine to find whatever I typed in. Now, let's say you use a particular website a lot, for example, Google Maps. So instead of having to search the internet for Ikea and asking where it is and then clicking on Google Maps, I can use Alfred's web searches to directly search with Google Maps. And I'll show you how that works. I'm gonna go ahead and do command space, command comma, and then I'm gonna click on web search. You can see some preloaded web searches that Alfred already has, and let's go ahead and use the Google Maps one. So I'm gonna do command space, and then I'm gonna type in the keyword that's listed here, maps. And then it'll say search Google Maps for, and I'm gonna type in Ikea, and it'll go ahead and search Google Maps for my search term. Pretty cool. Now I use the Google Maps search custom web search a lot and I don't like to type the word maps every time. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the preferences and I'm just gonna double click the keyword here and I'm gonna just change it to M. So that way when I do command space M, 
Alfred's gonna think that I wanna use the Google Maps custom web search, and then I can type in IKEA, and it'll go ahead and search Google Maps for IKEA, making it even faster. Now let's say one of the keywords like Amazon is longer. If you start to type Amazon and you see that the custom web search is the first result, I'm gonna go ahead and push enter and it'll complete the keyword for you because Alfred knows that you wanna use the custom web search and then I can search for Ikea or whatever you want, cool. Now if there's a particular website that you search a lot, you can add your own custom search for that particular website. For example, I use SoundCloud, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to SoundCloud, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a test search that has two words. That way you can see how the website handles spaces. So I'll click here, and I'll type Daft Punk. Once you do the search, go ahead and take the resulting URL and copy it, Command-C, and I'm gonna go back to Alfred Preferences. At the bottom right, I'm gonna hit Add Custom Search, and I'll paste the URL here. Now here it says encode spaces as, you need to see how the particular website treats spaces. Sometimes it's a plus sign, and other times it's percent %20. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy percent %20, and then paste it in the encode spaces as field. Next, I'm gonna read here. I don't like to read things that you could read yourself, but basically here's the format of what you need to put in the search URL. Whatever the search URL is and what you searched for, you put curly bracket, query, close curly bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that instead of putting Daft Punk. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add a title. So when it says search Google Maps for, this is what's gonna show up whenever you're using the Alfred window. So I'm gonna say SoundCloud search, and then the keyword is just gonna be whatever comes to mind. For example, whenever I change maps to M, I'm just gonna use something quickly that whatever I can think of whenever I think of SoundCloud. That didn't make sense, but we're gonna keep going. So I'm gonna just do SC, and then where it says drop icon above, it's just for the little icon that shows up in the Alfred search bar. So I'm gonna go to Google Images and search for SoundCloud so I can get an image. I'm just gonna pick the first one, not the best, but you get the point. And then before closing this window, I'm gonna go ahead and test it out. So I'll push the test button here, and then if the search URL is correctly programmed, it'll search the website for Alfred app, and it worked. Cool, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do save, then I'm gonna test out the web search that I just made. So I'm gonna do command space, SC, space, and it'll say SoundCloud search, that's what we set up, and I'll type in Daft Punk, and then it should successfully search for Daft Punk. Pretty cool. Next, I'm gonna go back to the preferences, and I'm gonna show you how to change the appearance of Alfred if you want to. So I'm gonna go to appearance, and here you can see some different themes, depending on what you like. And then here on the options, there are some things you can do. So right now I have hide hat on Alfred window. So if I deselect this and it's deselected by default, you'll see the little hat icon at the right here. Gonna go ahead and check it back because I like a clean window. And then if you do hide results shortcuts, if I search for fonts, you can see that the enter key, command two, command three, command four show up. But if you only really use the first bar, which I do, I'll keep typing until it's the folder that I want you can go ahead and remove that if you want a cleaner look. For hide menu bar icon, it's this icon right here. If you click here, it won't show up. I like to have it there just in case sometimes if my computer gets slow, I can go ahead and make sure to toggle Alfred manually with the mouse. For visible result items, you can go ahead and show how many you want to show up by default. And then there is a scroll indicator that will show up um, if there's more than the results that you choose to see. You can auto highlight the top result. So if you do, you know, fonts, you can see that the first result is highlighted. You can go ahead and take that away if you want a cleaner look. And then when you push enter, it'll go ahead and still open that first folder or the first item. Focusing has to do with how the app shows up whenever other apps are open. Um, just keep it on standard mode. That's the way I do it. If you want to change Alfred's position in the window, you can go ahead and drag here. Let's say you're researching something and you want Alfred to always show up in a particular area. You can do that. And then if you want to save the position after you dragged it, you click here. So if you don't want to save the position, then uncheck this. I'm going to go ahead and move it back. And then another thing that I like to do is you can actually reposition it in this window. So if I do it to the bottom left, it'll show up there. And it's a cool way to get it back to be centered if you can't figure it out, you know, just with the screen. 
Finally, with the free version, you can control the computer, and this is pretty fun. So I'm gonna go to features, and then I'm gonna go to system. So you can do all of these things with Alfred. So if you do command space restart, you can go ahead and restart the computer by just typing on the key keyboard. Another thing that I really like is to eject volume. So I'm gonna go ahead and select eject and plug in a hard drive. And then instead of eject, I like to change it to EJ. So you can see that the hard drive is mounted. So instead of having to go to the finder and click on the little eject button, let's say it was in Photoshop and I was doing something and I wanted to eject the hard drive after I opened a file, all I would have to do is you command space and do my keyword EJ. And then you can see the list of volumes that are connected and I'll go ahead and push enter since 5TB is my removable hard drive in the first result. And then you can see that it'll go ahead and give a notification once it's ejected. The notification didn't show up, but it will for you. And then other things that I like to do, let's say I had Google Chrome running in the background and I wanted to quit it without having to pull up Google Chrome first. You can go ahead and do command space, quit, and then quit any of the programs that are currently running. I, I usually like to change this to Q and then to FQ to force quit. So if I want to quit Google Chrome without having to go to Google Chrome, I could do command space, Q, quit Google Chrome, and then now Google Chrome is closed. And then if you wanted to quit all of the applications, you can do quit all and all of the applications will close. I like to do this before shutting off my computer. That way nothing will start up whenever I start my computer next time. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and do the power pack features in another video. So that way this one isn't too long. If you have any questions, you can email me at hello at the productivity shop.co or join the productivity shop Slack channel. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for power pack and settings. Thanks.